Hello and Assalamu alaikum everyone. My name is Arsalan Farooq and I teach physics and math. In this video, I will be trying to guide you through the process of uh, proving trigonometric identities. Um, when you are trying to prove any trigonometric identity, I would recommend you to follow some certain key steps. Like if you are ever in a situation where you have fractions being added up, then I would recommend you to take LCM and simplify those fractions. Like over here, you can see that sine square A and cos square A would be your least common multiple. And you use that to simplify the fractions. Cos square A gets multiplied by here, and sine square A gets multiplied by here. Similarly, if I have a set of fractions that needs to be simplified, I will still take an LCM and I'll say 1 minus cos A, 1 plus cos A is going to be the LCM and then I will multiply 1 plus cos A by 1 to get first term and 1 minus cos A by 1 to get the second term. What I do next is obviously the process of simplification. We will talk about that but something that I wanted to highlight here is the fact that if you ever see yourself in a situation where there are fractions which can be simplified or added then go for that. Or um, if you ever see a situation where there is a possibility of factorizing, like if you have sine square A minus cos square A, then there is a possibility of factorizing it and I would recommend you to go for that and apply the formula of A square minus B square equals A minus B and A plus B. Here A would be sine A and B would be cos a. And similarly, if you have to like sort of simplify 1 minus sine square a, then you can think of 1 as 1 square, and then you can still apply the formula as 1 minus sine a and 1 plus sine a. I'm not saying that this is going to be the only possible way out, but you should explore this possibility. Um, simplify fractions in case if you have complex fractions, like if you have something like this and you have to simplify it, it can get a little confusing in the beginning to try and simplify. Then in that case, I would suggest you to write this divisibility as the sine of division and then write 1 minus sine A over cos A. So that will allow you to simplify it more easily without getting confused. So this is going to be 1 divided by, I'll take the LCM, and this fraction is going to become cos A minus sine A divided by cos A. And then I also must know that every time I change this sign of divisibility into multiplication, then the fraction gets flipped over. So this can also be written down as 1 into cos A divided by cos A minus sine A. Uh, similarly, if you ever get a situation like this where you see there is no a possibility of uh, moving on with this. There's no formula that you can apply over here. There's no possibility of simplification. So also keep this option in mind that you have this option of multiplying and dividing it by the opposite sign. So if it's 1 minus cos A, you can multiply it with 1 plus cos A and divide it by 1 plus cos A and then move on and try and simplify that. Whenever you're trying to prove a trigonometric identity, I would recommend you to use more of sine and cos trigonometric ratios. Like if you have a tan, try and replace that tan with sine and cos. If you have cosec, try and replace that with sine and cos using trigonometric identities. And definitely at all times, you have to keep an eye on the identities that you might be using. So here is the list of identities that you will be required to use. Uh, the ones that I've highlighted in boxes are the ones which are going to be given to you in the formula sheet. First up, this is one identity that you have been using um, in AS math as well, which is sine square theta plus cos square theta is identical to one. So what you can do is that you can also identify these two more identities, quickly telling you that if I divide this whole identity by sine square theta, I will get this identity formed. Or if I divide this entire identity by cos square theta, I will get this identity formed. But somehow, uh, I mean, that's how you can get them, but they will be given to you in the formula sheet. Few things that you have to learn is cosec theta is another trigonometric ratio, which is the reciprocal of sine theta. 
likewise sec theta is 1 over cos theta and cot theta is 1 over tan theta. This is also one of the trigonometric identities. There are only two trigonometric identities that you were supposed to use in AS math. One was sine square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1 and the other one is tan theta equals sine theta over cos theta. Uh, this will also be given to you. And then you have these compound angle formulas for sum and differences. Just make a note, as I said, I mean, these all formulas are going to be given to you, but you just have to understand the way it's written. The, the sign on top is paired with the sign on top here. The sign at the bottom is paired with the sign at the bottom here. So sine of a plus b gives you sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. Whereas sine of a minus b gives you sine a cos b minus cos a sine b. Uh, exactly the opposite applies to cos. In, in cos, a plus in the middle ends up becoming a minus and a minus in the middle ends up becoming a plus. But please, um, even if you are very, very confident about knowing the formula, I would still suggest you to have a look at the formula sheet and try and make sure that you don't make a mistake. And similarly, you have a compound angle formula for tan trigonometric ratio as well, which is tan A plus B is equal to tan A plus tan B over 1 minus tan A tan B. Similarly, tan A minus B is tan A minus tan B over 1 plus tan A tan B. And then a few very, very important trigonometric identities again, which are the double angle formulas. All of these are given to you. And in the previous video, I have also discussed that where we get these formulas from. But somehow sine 2a is 2 sine a cos a, or cos 2a can be written down in three different forms, which also creates a bit of a confusion when you're trying to prove an identity. Obviously, you have to think smartly in terms of what form you have to use to try and prove your identity. Uh, but yeah, cos 2a is cos square a minus sine square a, or 2 cos square minus 1 as well, or it also is 1 minus 2 sine square a. And similarly, you have double angle formula for tan 2a, which is 2 tan a over 1 minus tan square a. Um, it will become more clearer as you will use the formula, but there's a reason these are called double angle formulas. The structure of the formula remains the same, only you just have to maintain the ratio of these angles. Like for instance, if I want to write 4a over here, then I can write 2a over here and 2a over here. The rest of the formula remains the same. Like this 2 doesn't change, the sign doesn't change, the cos doesn't change. You just have to make sure that the ratio of angles from the left hand side to the right hand side has to be 2 is to 1. So you can also apply this formula with just a sign a over here. In that case, this is going to become sine a by 2 and cos a by 2. Similarly, if you have a cos 2a over here, that's cos square a minus sine square a, but you can also write it down for cos of a, which will be cos square a by 2 minus sine square a by 2. And a lot of times it would be very, very obvious uh, that uh, uh, which formula you should be going for if it's a double angle formula because from the left hand side to the right hand side, you can see that there is a ratio of 2 is to 1 angle, which will mean that you should be using the double angle identities to try and prove that. One thing that I said earlier on is that we prefer to have sine and cos trigonometric ratios. Like if you have a tan, you can always rewrite that as sine over cos. If you have a cot, you can rewrite that as 1 over tan, or you can also write that down as cos over sine. Sec can be replaced as 1 over cos theta. Not all the time it works, but most of the time it really helps a lot to write down the trigonometric ratios in terms of uh, sine and cos. So let's have a look at how we, we try and prove trigonometric identities. Um, and it's always advisable, not always from the left hand side, but whenever you're trying to prove an identity, try and start from a side that you think is more complicated or that has more tendency of getting simplified. Like in this case, if I look at this one, I know that I can do more simplifications with this. So bringing this into that form is going to be harder, not that it's undoable, but it's going to be harder, uh, but bringing this into that form would be rather easier. So choose a form that you think you can simplify uh, uh, more easily. So I started off with cos 4a minus sine 4a, and I can write cos to the power 4a as cos square a whole square, and sine to the power 4a as sine square a whole square. 
the idea is you don't cross multiply in identities you don't add term from one side to the other side or subtract term from one side to the other side you have to start from one side and you have to bring it into the other side that is what you would be trying to do here so like over here i had cos to the power 4a minus sine to the power 4a so i wrote it down as cos square a whole square and sine square a whole square so here i can apply the formula of a square minus b square which becomes a minus b times a plus b and then I will be able to use the identity and I can see that cos square a plus sine square a is equal to 1. And I will be left with cos square a minus sine square a where I will use the double angle identity. There was already a sort of indication in the question right from the offset that I had a 1 is to 2 angle ratio. I had to use double angle formula. So I will use cos square a minus sine square a equals cos 2a. And that is how it can be proved. Similarly, if I would look at another identity, I have to show that cot theta minus tan theta is identical to 2 cot 2 theta. Again, I know that I'm going to be using a double angle formula because the ratio of angle from left to right is 1 is to 2. But uh, I would ideally prefer to write these in sine and cos so that it becomes easier for me to simplify those. So I write cot theta is cos theta over sine theta and tan theta is sine theta over cos theta. I see fractions, I try and simplify them, I took an LCM, the numerator becomes cos square theta minus sine square theta and the denominator becomes sine theta cos theta. Now this is an important step that over here you can recognize that you can directly use cos to theta formula but as far as this one is concerned, the sign, keep your trigonometric identities in front of you. That will always help you to sort of identify that how to go about it. So whenever you are even trying to think over a particular step, make sure that the formula sheet is right next to you so that you can know which formula can be used. So if I would move on from this point, I would be knowing that over here, I cannot use a double angle formula because there is also a two in that formula but that doesn't make much of a difference. I can do one over two and two over here so that I can apply the double angle formula both in the numerator and denominator. So cos square theta minus sine square theta becomes cos two theta and two sine theta cos theta becomes sine two theta. And then I can sort of simplify it and I'll get myself two cot theta, two cot two theta. Also know that there's no, not always only one way of proving a trigonometric identity. So I started off in this, but there's also a possibility that I do not have to really write it down always in terms of sine and cos. So alternately, if I had written cot theta as one over tan theta, I had taken my LCM, and then I would have gotten one minus tan square theta over uh, tan theta. And in to be able to apply that particular formula of tan two theta that I already have, I would know that I'm going to need a 2 tan theta. So I multiplied and divided it by 2 tan theta. And then I can see that if I flip it over, that's directly the double angle formula of this. So I can say that 2 divided by this whole thing is going to be a tan 2 theta. And that's how I can prove it again. Moving on to another example, I have to prove a trigonometric identity and that's cos 2x plus tan x sine 2x. And um, when I'm trying to prove this again, there is a very, very clear indication in this question that I have to use double angle formula because I can't simplify x with 2x. So I need to have all of them in the same form. So I have used a double angle formula here. I have replaced cos 2x by cos square x minus sine square x. The tan x is being copied as it is and sine 2x is being copied as 2 sine x cos x. And then I will move on with my simplification. This is cos square x minus sine square x. Tan x becomes sine x over cos x and cos x and cos x cancels out. So this becomes cos square x copied as it is minus sine square x again copied as it is and this becomes 2 sine square x minus sine square x plus 2 sine square x becomes plus sine square x and cos square x plus sine square x is another trigonometric identity which is equal to 1. Let's take a look at another example and again an example that right from the beginning I do know that I'm going to have to use a double angle formula. So cos 2 theta becomes cos square theta minus sine square theta and then I will simplify it 
it simplifies to cos square theta plus sine square theta and that becomes equal to 1. I look at another example and I can still see there's a ratio of 2 is to 1 with the angles here. So irrespective of what side I plan to start from, I know I will be planning to use the double angle formula. So I first of all I replaced, I don't also like anything other than sine and cos to try and prove an identity. So I replaced cos sec 2 theta by 1 over sine 2 theta and then sine 2 theta became 2 sine theta cos theta. That's the double angle formula that I've used. The two cancels out. I'm left with 1 over sine theta and cos theta. I can write them separately. I can't do that. Please do not confuse this step with 1 over sine theta plus cos theta equals 1 over sine theta plus 1 over cos theta. That's completely wrong. I can never do that. But if they are as a product, so I can write it down as 1 over sine theta and 1 over cos theta. 1 over sine theta becomes cosec theta and 1 over cos theta becomes sec theta because cosec is reciprocal of sine and sec is reciprocal of cos. Um, moving on with another example, in the beginning I have most questions which are using double angle and you can see over here as well that a 2 theta and theta can't be simplified. So I'm going to have to use a double angle formula. So I replace this sine 2 theta as 2 sine theta cos theta. Then I took 2 cos theta common. This is again simplifying by using an identity sine square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1. So this becomes 1 and this becomes 2 cos theta and that simplifies to 2 cos theta which is exactly what I had to prove. Let's have a look at another example. I have to prove tan theta plus cot theta is 2 cosec 2 theta. Tan theta and cot theta are not the ideal trigonometric identities that I would want to have. So I replace tan theta by sine theta over cos theta and cot theta by cos theta over sine theta. Took an LCM and sine square theta plus cos square theta is another identity that becomes 1. Since I had to use double angle formula and there was a 2 missing, so I multiplied and divided by 2. So the denominator became sine 2 theta, which in turn can be renowned as, since 1 over sine 2 theta, that can be replaced as cosec 2 theta. Let's have a look at another example. Again, if I would look at this particular question, I would know that the left hand side is the ideal one to start from because that has more room for simplification. So I will replace cos t theta and cos 2 theta over here. Well, and th this is basically one example where you could simply say that the idea or the fact that there are three different forms of cos 2 theta can really confuse you. Which form to use here because cos 2 theta is cos square theta minus sine square theta or cos 2 theta is also 2 cos square theta minus 1. If you look at those formulas, so you have to choose um, again a little smartly and you have to sort of identify that you have to use that form so that it simplifies greatly because if I use 1 minus 2 sine square theta I can see 1 and 1 cancelling out and similarly if I use 2 cos square theta minus 1 in the denominator I can again see 1 and 1 cancelling out. So that way my, my working becomes very very simplified and easier. I'm left with 2 sine square theta in the numerator and 2 cos square theta in the denominator. 2 and 2 cancels out, sine square theta over cos square theta becomes tan square theta. That is exactly what I had to prove. Similarly, I have to prove cot theta minus tan theta. I would again uh, want to rewrite that as cos theta over sine theta and minus sine theta over cos theta, taking an LCM and this cos square theta minus sine square theta, I know I can put an identity for, a missing 2 can be introduced over here so that this becomes sine 2 theta and this becomes cos 2 theta and can be replaced as cot 2 theta. Let's have a look at another example. I have cot 2x plus cosec 2x. Cot 2x can be renowned as cos 2x over sine 2x. Again, sticking to the idea that I don't want anything preferably other than sine and cos. Similarly, I replaced cosec 2x as 1 over sine 2x. Took an LCM and then I applied the formula. As I said, I will use cos 2x as 2 cos square x minus 1 ideally because I can see 1 and 1 cancelling out with that. And sine 2x becomes 2 sine x cos x and then you simplify it and you get exactly what you had to prove. Um, having a look at another example, cos 2x over cos x plus sine x. 
again looking at what I have to prove, it's clearly uh, evident that I'm going to have to use cos 2x equals cos square x minus sine square x. Then when I look at this, I know this is a square minus a square, so I can use the formula of a minus b and a plus b. Ideally, looking forward is the fact that cos x plus sine x and cos x plus sine x both in the numerator and denominator would cancel out. And I will be left with cos x minus sine x, which is what I had to prove. Likewise, if I look at sine 2x, you know, maximum I can do with sine 2x is I rewrite that as 2 sine x cos x. And that doesn't seem to be simplifying a lot. And this is basically one of the rare examples, but you have to keep your eye open to the fact that it is not necessary that you always start from the left hand side. Sometimes you can be starting from the right hand side. So I started from this side, 2 tan x over 1 plus tan square x. Then I use the trigonometric identity 1 plus tan square x is x square x. Remember, you're not learning any of these identities. You just have to learn to use them. So always keep the formula sheet in front of you so that you can recognize that 1 plus tan square x can be replaced as x square x. And then 1 over x square x becomes cos square x. Tan x becomes sin x over cos x. One of the cos x is canceling out you would be left with exactly what you needed to sine x cos x, hence sine 2x. Now let's have a look at another example. Again, I see fractions. And when I see fractions, I would look to simplify them by taking an LCM. So I took cos x plus sine x and cos x minus sine x as LCM. Cos x minus sine x multiplies here. Cos x plus sine x multiplies here. So the numerator, because minus sine x and plus sine x are canceling out, so the numerator becomes 2 cos x and denominator becomes cos square x minus sine square x. Cos square x minus sine square x is cos 2x, and this is 2 cos x, exactly what I had to prove. Let's have a look at another example. I have sine 2x and I have cos 2x, and again, I'm gonna have to use the double angle formula. Sine 2x, I don't have many choices. I'm just gonna replace that as two sine x cos x. But as far as cos 2x is concerned, I would love to go for two cos square x minus one because I can see this one canceling out and more room for simplification. And that is exactly what happens if I take sine x common from the numerator and cos x common from the denominator, I can see that this and this factors are the, both of them are cancelling out. I'll be left with sin x over cos x, which is tan x. Another example, I have to use a double angle formula. That's very obvious. I replace sec 2x by 1 over cos 2x and this sec 2x by 1 over cos 2x. Now this gets a little confusing in terms of like you have denominators over denominators, like fractions over fractions. So it can get confusing and you can definitely end up making a mistake in that. And in these situations, I would suggest you to replace this long divisibility sign by this divisibility sign so that you can work with this fraction alone and this fraction alone. Took an LCM on the left hand side, took an LCM on the right hand side, again pick the right formula for cos 2x so that one cancels out. And once that happens, I'll be left with 2 sine square x over 2 cos square x, 2 and 2 also cancels out. That is tan square x. And using an identity, I know that tan square x is sec square x minus 1. Um, let's have a look at another example. Again, you have 2 thetas, 2 thetas, and theta over here. So I replace sine 2 theta as 2 sine theta cos theta, and cos 2 theta as 1 minus 2 sine square theta. Looking at one cancelling out. Over here, sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cos theta. As I said, I have only one option for that. But for cos 2 theta, I will rewrite it as 2 cos square theta minus 1. And once I will see that ones are cancelling out, it can I can easily factorize it by taking 2 sine theta common from the numerator and 2 cos theta common from the denominator. A lot of factors are cancelling out. I'd be left with only sine theta over cos theta, which becomes equal to tan theta. Now, this is an interesting example because if you could see again, if you could compare the left hand side to the right hand side, again, there's a ratio of 1 is to 2. You're using a double angle formula, but you're using a double angle formula differently so that x becomes half x. Starting with the left hand side, I wrote cosec x as 1 over sin x, cot x as cos x over sin x, I took an LCM, and after taking an LCM, I know that I'm going to have to use double angle formulas here. 
So just like I know that cos 2 x is 1 minus 2 sin square x. So cos x will be equal to 1 minus 2 sin square x by 2. As I said, the identity remains same. You just have to make sure that you keep the ratio of 1 is to 2. So cos x can be replaced as 1 minus sin square x upon 2. And the choice of this formula is again based on the fact that I wanted to cancel this one out so that I have uh, more simplification being done. And sin x, there's only one choice. I can replace it by 2 sin x by 2 cos x by 2. And then again, uh, you could see 1 and 1 cancels out. After simplifying that, 2 and 2 also cancels out. Sin x by 2 and sin x by 2 cancels out. You are left with sin x by 2 over cos x by 2, which in turn becomes tan x by 2. Another interesting example, you have this half x plus 45 and half x plus 45 and you have x over here that also sort of gives you an idea that you have to use a double angle formula. But um, it's, I mean, you can do one thing in these kind of situations, rewriting this thing again and again can be really tiring. So you can just suppose this entire thing equals to y. It becomes, and, and then, I mean, you'll simplify it, and then in the end, you would replace it by what it was originally. So, see, this becomes tan y, this becomes cot y, and it's also easier to work with. It's also easier to simplify, and it's also like something that you uh, can think on. So, I replace um, cot as 1 over tan. I mean, I had an option. I could also replace it by sine over cos, but I can replace it by 1 over tan. And then I can take an LCM, this becomes sex square y because 1 plus tan square y is sex square y. So 1 over cos square y for sex square y and for tan y sine y over cos y. Again, you would notice that this divisibility sign I replaced with this so that I am less confused. I flip it over because of divisibility. Uh, one of the cos y's would cancel out. I'll be left with sine y cos y. I introduce it to so that I can apply a double angle formula and it becomes 2 sine 2 y. Now that's the point of time where I can now think of replacing this angle by what it originally was, which is half x plus 45. Multiplying with 2, it becomes sine of x plus 90. Uh, few us, of us would know that sine of x plus 90 is cos, but you don't really have to know that. You can open it up by using a compound angle formula. Sine x cos 90 plus cos x sine 90. So cos 90 becomes 0 and sin 90 becomes 1 and this simplifies as cos x and 2 upon cos x is also 2 sec x. So looking at another example, I start with left hand side because I feel that's more complicated one. I started with that side and then there's a very, very clear hint over here. I'm going to have to take DLCM, which I did sin b cos b sin a cos b minus cos a sin b. And then when I look at this, this is basically a compound angle formula. So I go back to the formula sheet. I will recall that sine A minus B is sine A cos B minus cos A sine B. So not only that I'm going to be using identities in this direction, I can also be using them in the opposite direction. So I can replace this thing by sine of A minus B. And after replacing it with sine of a minus b, that's exactly what I wanted. But in the denominator, I have to make some amends because I have to use double angle formula. So I multiplied and divided by 2 and this becomes sine 2b. You can clearly see that these questions require you to have very good knowledge of how to use the double angle formulas. Again, moving on with another example, this is clearly the left hand side more complicated example. I can see factorization happening here. I took 4 sin a cos a common. After taking 4 sin a cos a common, I can see that over here I can use the double angle formula which is of sin theta and over here I can use the double angle formula which is of cos 2 theta. So I splitted this 4 into a product of 2 and 2. This becomes sin 2a and this becomes cos 2a. And once I write it down like this, you will be able to notice that this is also something I can apply a double angle formula on where the ratio is to 1 is to 2. So if it's 2a originally, when I use the double angle formula, it will become 4a. So it simplifies to sine 4a. <clears throat> 
Let's have a look at another example. I, although I can start with the left hand side, but I feel that there are very few options of simplification. I may have to rationalize, it may take up more time, but the right hand side is something that I can simplify more. So I start with the right hand side cos 2a over 1 plus sine 2a, and then I apply the double angle formulas on both of them. And um, this sine 2a becomes equal to 2 sine a cos a and uh, cos square a minus sine square a is copied as it is. Now one more thing, if you look at this very, very closely, you will be able to recognize that this is also something that can be factorized by something that's not very, very, it's a little unusual example, but this is a square plus 2ab plus b square. So I can write it down as a plus b whole square. And as far as the numerator is concerned, that's also getting factorized by using the formula a square minus b square. So that becomes cos theta minus sine theta and cos theta plus sine theta. So once I would do that, this factor and this factor would cancel out and it comes out to be exactly what you had originally on the left hand side. And hence the identity is being proved. Another example, I have sine 3a over sine a and cos 3a over cos a. I'm going to have to take the LCM. I took the LCM and then I, if I look at this closely, this is sine A cos B plus cos A sine B. That becomes sine A plus B. A is 3A and B is A. So it becomes sine 3A plus A, um, which is sine 4A and the denominator is sine A cos A. I have to use double angle formula differently in the numerator and differently in the denominator. So sine 4a can be written down as 2 sine 2a cos 2a. And introducing a 2, 2 sine a cos a can be written down as sine 2a. So that one of the sine 2a would cancel out and 2 times 2 times cos 2a simplifies to 4 cos 2a. So guys, uh, that's pretty much it from my side. I hope um, this video helped you towards understanding how to prove trigonometric identities. If you did find it useful, I'd really appreciate if you give a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to my channel and um, I will put the link of uh, the worksheet notes in the description. You can download it from there. Thank you so much.